The recent heavy rains made the grass a skating rink, and Stacy's car slid all the way to the dirt embankment, flipped over it, and amazingly landed on its wheels in Lake Roy. Rescue workers waited for the 29-year-old Enon, Ohio driver to clear the cobwebs before he got out. We're ready to qualify for the NASCAR Nationwide Series. That is Morgan Shepard, driver the number 89. He will go out 22nd Ooh, Ooh. this afternoon. Morgan <laughs> got loose. <laughs> A big incident in turn one involving three key players and just a moment ago here's what's happened a fan somehow gets out of the uh, infield area comes out on the track and is trying to get Matt Kenseth's <laughs> autograph oh do you think alcohol and he had anything at all to do with that <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Kenseth is going you're not going to believe what just happened here guys he gets jumps over the guardrail runs back up and then gets apprehended here yeah he might get a free ride home this will be the 98th race at the Daytona International Speedway. This is the first time qualifications have been canceled due to rain. So the field was set by the now. Yep. There were. Oh, oh, that's not good. Birds on the racetrack and uh, not a good situation. But Jeff Bird now. The spike of G-force when a driver hits the wall is, is almost in half of where it used to be. The miracle. Mike Harmon climbed out of that car uninjured. Without the Hans device and the safer wall, who knows what happens. Greg Biffle is the lucky dog. He'll come around and be the 33rd car on the lead lap. I'm telling you, Stewart's bored. When you start <laughs> bump drafting the pace car, he's looking for some fun. Pace car driver is Brent Bodine. He's smiling. Oh, yeah, he's having a big time. NASCAR has asked Tony to back off a little bit, and he did. <laughs> well, we've seen deer on this racetrack, we've seen rabbit, we've seen all kind of things, and here they are chasing a foul, uh, I guess. <laughs> we had a heck of an experience with a rabbit here a few uh, years ago. You remember that, Ned? Oh, yeah, the front straightaway. <laughs> there the it is. got to see it. Well, by God, they were right. I don't know whether that's a turkey or not. This 91 extravaganza, a seagull that flies into the left front end of Dale Earnhardt's Chevy Lumina, he doesn't get to see the end of the race. Watch the left side of your screen as Michael Waltrip's car hits the end of a cement wall, part of a gate through which passenger cars go to the infield. The car disintegrates upon impact. Earnhardt is the one who made the ultimate call. He said, no. He said, I can't afford to lose one spot on the racetrack. It's so tough to pass out there. I can't afford to lose any time. So no tires, gas only, and they were gone. Dale Earnhardt has pulled ahead of the pace car. What's going on? Playing with Elmo. He, he loves to play with Elmo. <laughs> Sometimes you get behind him and bump him and do all kind of things. Elmo, he just sits there and takes it in stride. <laughs> now, we have seen some amazing things already tonight. The pace car has a flat right rear tire. <laughs> we don't see these things normally, but tonight we're seeing all sorts of things. You remember at Talladega that one time when someone stole the pace car yeah. right before the race? And they made a blockade across the fourth turn to make him stop. <laughs> and they got him out of the truck, got him out of the car. Well, the pace car, we understand, has been stolen. The uh, officials are not driving this thing, and <laughs> somebody has actually gotten in the pace car and stole it. There are at least two policemen on motorcycles, plus this car that are pursuing the pace car right now. And up till now, the pace car has not been caught. They've created a roadblock there coming off of turn number four, heads towards the tri oval, and we think there is some unusual drama occurring here. Let's see what happens when he gets to the uh, roadblock. Will he try to go through it, or will he stop and be captured? And I guess he's going to stop. <laughs> well, this is certainly a... Well, I've heard the story of that man who makes a living by going around crashing parties, but this is certainly a first. 